for me, particularly when my product launched, my very first product, first product I managed, when it launched, I felt like, wow, I'm done. Like, I've done the hard work. Now I can just rest, just relax. The product is now live. Let me relax. Um, but then, practically, your work as a PM isn't over because you have launched a product. The, um, the post-launch phase is actually very important. And um, I kind of divided that into two. There's a phase that comes immediately after you launch. That's immediately after you deploy your product. Now, what happens immediately after you deploy your product? I'll tell a very short story here. Um, this is something that happened with me. I was managing a product, right? And then um, we had a new feature that we had worked on for about, for over a month actually. And it was really tasking on me because I always had to get the engineers to deliver on their task, I had to do a lot of tests um, on the staging environment to make sure this feature is what we need it to be. And then when we're sure that everything is fine, we had a demo with our stakeholders, with the management team, with the stakeholders. Everything was fine. And it was like, yeah, we're good to go. So on a Friday, we had the demo on Thursday. And then on a Friday afternoon, I told the engineers, okay, we're all, we all set and everything. Let's deploy. So we deployed the product. And once they told me the product was live, I was ecstatic. I was so happy, like, oh, my God, I'm done. This is over like i can now get some rest and that was it i went for lunch and by the time i was back from my lunch and kind of preparing to close right all hell was let loose because it was like something had broken after we deployed there was a lot of issues customers could not pay for one thing or the other customers could not like things were just not right and it had been like that for like an hour. The customer service was trying to manage it. But at some point they were like, you know what, we can't do this. So they had to reach back to the product manager to like tell me this is what's going on. And I was really confused because I was like, but I tested this thing on the staging environment. It was fine. Everything was working well. What's going on? So I went to my line manager then, and then we just went to the engineer together and they checked and they said, oh, something had broken. From the deployment it was like something had happened so everything on customer facing was just disrupted and if that was not contained immediately it would have cost the business money so we had to roll back on the deployments now um that's why i divided this into two i have the post deployment phase the post deployment the first thing to do once you deploy is to test test the product test the live product, make sure everything is functioning properly, make sure every component of the product is functioning properly. If it's a new product, right, just make sure you run through the entire thing again, test the entire thing. If it's a new feature you're pushing, sometimes when you push a new feature, it might affect some other parts of the product that you didn't even work on. So you have to run like a post deployment, I'll call it a post deployment regression test. Basically a regression test is just um, running a test on functioning parts that you had on the app before, before you pushed a new one. So just test the entire thing, make sure everything is fine. When everything is fine, then you can now be sure that, okay, yes, you have deployed, you have launched your product, everything is fine and you are fine, right? So that's the first thing, make sure you run a test, test the um, product to ensure functionality of the entire product. Then the next thing to do, immediately you deploy, is to have a deployment retrospective session with your development team. This is important because sometimes, as product managers, of course, you know that we work with engineers, right? Sometimes the engineers run into one issue or the other. Sometimes um, they'll tell you, oh, the front end deploys before the back end could deploy. Like you have to make sure there's unity in deploying when you're deploying your product, right? So have a retros retrospective session know what went right, know what you can improve on during your next deployment so that the next time you're deploying, everything is fine. Everybody is aligned, is well aligned because of your respective sec um, session that you had with them, right? So those are the two things to do immediately. Immediately you deploy your products. That's immediately you launch. Those are the first two things that I do personally as a product manager. I just make sure everything went fine. I test everything, make sure everything is fine. Everything is aligned. The product is not broken right so um those are the first things to do now i'll go 
um, straight into what to do once you have launched the product. So now you've launched the product, everything is fine. Um, the product is not broken or the, for every part is functioning appropriately, right? That's fine. Now, what do you do? Um, here I have like, after the product has launched is when the critical work of a product manager begins. I mentioned that before, that's when the real critical work starts, right? You need to ensure your customers are using your product or your new feature. You need to ensure your customers are not dropping off. So you need to focus on customer retention. And there are a number of things that you need to focus on once the product launches. The first thing that you need to focus on or that you need to do when your product launches is you need to listen to your customer. Now you have pushed the product out, you've launched, everything is fine. You need to know if your customers are using the product because it is possible you just push a product out and nobody's using it, or you just deploy a new feature on an existing product and it's not even useful. Nobody's using it, probably because of one issue or the other. So you need to get feedback from your customers. You need to know how they're using the product. You need to know if they are using it. You need to know if it is solving the, the issues that they needed to solve, right? So um, ways to reach out to your customers, you can reach out to them through surveys, you can interview them, just basically pay attention to their suggestion, pay attention to how they feel when they use your product, right? It will help you make um, informed decisions that will improve the product. Sometimes the customers can give you insights to something that you didn't even think about. So it's important to know how they are using the product, if they are using the product at all. That's the first thing you listen to your customers to make sure the product is actually solving the problems that it is supposed to solve. Now, the next thing to do is to fix bugs and improve the features that you have on the product. When you listen to your customers, there will probably be one thing or the other that you will note down that, okay, this should be improved on, right? Or this can be better. After listening to your customers, there will be one thing or the other that you will take, um, that you will take home from there. And then also you fix bugs. So because you've launched a product doesn't mean there won't be a bug or there won't be one thing or the other from time to time. Right, so there might always be issues. Sometimes there might be issues after you've launched your product, like I mentioned before, you test it. When you test it, if there's any bug, you get that fixed. And make sure you prioritize the bugs that, are, that you prioritize the features that have direct impact on the customer. Now, as a product manager, like for my products now, that are the product I'm managing now, I have the customer facing side and I have the um, back office product, that's the admin. Right. So if there's an issue on the customer facing side and there's an issue on the admin, the customer facing side takes priority because those are your customers there. On the admin side, yes, you also fix that, but you can easily talk to the people managing it in the office like, okay, we have to fix this so the customers are fine before we fix this. If you don't have enough engineers, always prioritize um, the, the, the issues that are critical, that, in, that impact on your users the impact on user's experience. So you fix bugs, you improve your features once you've launched your products. You don't just leave the products that way. You make sure you're always improving on it. Then um, also you have to monitor the product's performance. Now this is very important. As a product manager, when you're writing your PRD or when you're planning to build a product, there are certain things that you have in your mind, right? We call them um, product metrics. So there are certain things that you have in your mind that will tell you when your product is performing well or when it is not performing well, right? There are certain things that's probably the number of um, customer acquisition, your transaction numbers, things like that will make, make, let you know when your product is performing well or when it's not performing well. So you need to pay attention to that. You can't just launch the product and just probably wait for customers to tell you there's a bug, then you go and fix it. You won't know how the product is doing, you will know if the product is, is successful or not. When you monitor these numbers, your sales numbers, your, you check how users are using the product, the users, user adoption, things like that, you will know how well the product is performing. There are various tools to check this. We have um, Amplitude, we have um, different tools basically that you can use to check out all these things. Um, so you can employ any of these tools to use and to check how your product is doing in the market, how users are using it. There are things like it helps you make informed decisions. There are things like um, even knowing, okay, if a customer is going, is dropping off at probably your onboarding stage. Sometimes 
like in, on my product at your point, we see that customers, they sign up, and then after signing up, once they get to KYC, they just drop off. So sometimes we have like maybe a thousand customers sign up in a week, and at the end of the day, only 200 do their KYC. Why? We want to know why that is happening. So that is monitoring your performance, because that means it's not, your customers are not really getting to use the product. They're not getting to the points where they will actually be delighted by the product. They're just at the sign up um, stage. So you need to monitor those metrics. You need to watch it closely and know how it's doing on the market. So I said here, check your sales number, um, your user adoption, customer feedback is also a way to know how your um, product is performing. If you have negative feedback, then you know it's not performing so well. If you have positive feedback from the um, from your customers, you know, okay, you're doing something right. You know how satisfied your users are when you check, um, when you monitor your product's performance. Now, the next thing is communicate with your stakeholders. When you monitor the performance, you know if it's doing well or if it's not doing well. Um, as When early in my career as a product manager, I kind of had issues communicating with my stakeholders when the product was not doing very well. It's for me, it was almost like, oh, I failed. So I don't want to go back and tell them this is what is happening. The product is not doing so well. We don't have as many transactions as we ought to be having, or we don't have as many users um, signing up as we ought to have. So I kind of shied away from talking to the stakeholders. I just just trying to solve it on my own with the engineers, but that is not right. You need to communicate with your stakeholders. You need to be transparent with them. They need to be informed of the performance, right? The key stakeholders. Um, for example, the marketing team for a product is always a key stakeholder in the products because they know how to reach out to the customers, right? If, for example, your product is having issues, you're having issues, um, Maybe if you if you you're running an e-commerce website, um, for example, and you see that every time that the customer gets things into their carts, they just abandon the cart. Your cart abandonment rate is high. You can reach out to your marketing team, and once they see that oh, a cart has been abandoned, they can shoot a mail to the person. Oh, you've abandoned your cart. Do you what? What do you want us to do? Do you want us to? Um, do you want to end this? continue this transaction, do you want to buy, do you, um, if you buy it now, you, it will be delivered the same day, that kind of thing. They can always help um, to send out information to the customers that will be important, that will be useful. So if you keep quiet on the performance of your products, whether it is good or bad, if you keep quiet when it is bad, for example, like I did, like I used to do, just because of, I feel like I feel, they just keep quiet. If you keep quiet, then you won't get help. It's important to communicate with your stakeholders. They will know you. You can brainstorm together. They will know what next to do. Okay, what should we do? Should we put more money into marketing? Should we get our customer um, relations to call the customers? There are things that can be done. So don't keep quiet. Make sure you communicate every time, from time to time. Communicate with your stakeholders about the performance of the product. It is very important. Communicate with them about updates. In case you've gotten different or you have sat down and you've realized okay we need to improve this you need to let your stakeholders know that this is um a part of the product that we would like to improve on they can give their input too in those kind of things it's, it's important to know that a product manager doesn't have all the answers that's a mistake that i made i feeling like okay i'm supposed to have all the answers and since i don't have all the answers then i can't go to anybody because they will now know that i don't know it but it's, you don't need to know everything. Basically, what a product manager does is to coordinate the different, um, the different opinions of people, the different suggestions that everybody has, coordinate it and get to a point where you know, okay, this is the best line of action to take, then prioritize. That's what a product manager is supposed to do. You, you're not expected to have the entire answer, so communicate with your stakeholders. I can't overemphasize this. This is so important. This is really important for you as a um, as a product manager when you have launched the product. Communicate with your um, stakeholders. Now, the next thing to do is to keep an eye on your competition. You have launched, and you probably have other people doing the same thing that you are doing. You have to keep an eye on them. You need to know what they are doing. You need to stay updated. Monitor their product changes. When they when there is an update on their products, you need to know what the update is monitor their pricing, their market strategies, and then use that knowledge to adapt your own strategy if necessary. 
Now I'm going to talk about the product I'm managing now again. We do, um, so Glover is a gift card company. We gift cards, one of the major things we do. We buy gift cards, we sell gift cards. So um, sometimes our competitors are selling gift cards or they are, yeah, they are buying gift cards from customers at a higher rate. So it means they pay customers more than we are paying. If we don't keep an eye on what they are doing, we might just we might just think in our own minds that we have the best treats. So we are, we are buying from you at this amount and we think that's the best treat that there is. But then we realize that probably people are not trading so much with us again. When we now go out and check what our competitors are doing, we see that they have a better rate. So they are paying people better for their cards than we are paying. So why would somebody want to trade with us when they can get more money from another place? That's why it's important to keep an eye on your competitors, know what they are doing. When they change their prices, try to understand why they change the price, right? Um, there was a time that we had like an influx of customers, like massive influx of customers on one of our products that they were, they were just so, there was so much sales. Yes, we were happy with it, right? So people are coming, they're trading this particular thing and it was, it was nice, we we're happy. But then we now decided, okay, let us know why. That's one of the important jobs of a product manager. You need to know why everything is happening. Why is this happening? Why is this not right? Why is this working? You need to know why. So you can really, we can replicate for the good things. And for the things that are not good, you know how to stall them from happening next time. So we wanted to know why. And then we went to the competitor and we saw that our rates, our exchange rate was really low. Apparently the exchange rate had dropped. And for some reason, um, on our own platform, we had not changed it. So there was an influx of customers. They were rushing in to come and buy using the old exchange rate, while other competitors had increased their own. Now, it was a good thing that we had a lot of customers. But by the time we converted, our transaction, num our numbers, or the um, revenue we are getting from it was not good because we were actually running at a loss. So that's one of the reasons why it's important to put an eye out on your competition. Know what they are doing per time. Know what they are doing. You can go to their, um, you can go to their page. Know what they are posting. Know how they are advertising. What they are, whatever they are advertising. Just really look at them and know if what they are doing is going to affect what you, what your own product. And sometimes you see that you're actually doing better than your competitor, and that's fine. That's why I said. Adapt your strategy if necessary. If it's not necessary, then just leave it. If you know you are doing better, then just leave it. But always know that you're in competition with other people. And sometimes our competitors are not the kind of competitors that we, they are not the direct competitors. They are also indirect competitors in the, in, in, in the market. Um, I think it was the CEO of Netflix that at a point he was asked who his major competitor was. And he said the competitor is sleep because the time that people are supposed to be watching Netflix, they probably want to sleep. So it can be as indirect as that. But whatever you know, we have an impact on your products, on the product that you have launched. Keep an eye out for it and know what is happening, right? Just be alert on your, on your competition, basically. Then the next thing is um, plan for future updates. You need to make plans for iterative development, create a roadmap for the product's growth. And it's important I state here that your roadmap is dynamic. It can change at any time. Your roadmap is not cast in stone, but it doesn't mean you should not plan. You should always have a plan, have a roadmap. When you've launched the product, know, okay, in the next three months, we want to update this thing. In the next three months, we want, or in the next, um, Six, six months, this is what we want to have rolled out as an update on this product or as the next version, something like that. Just have a roadmap, right, for the product's growth. The product can remain the same. It can be static. There have to be things that you keep changing. There have to be things that you will improve upon. So have a roadmap for that. Plan for future updates. If you don't plan, then it's going to meet you suddenly. Suddenly, one day, you just realize that your product is obsolete and other products or your competitors, they've gone ahead and you're still doing things the old way. So you need to always make plans for future updates on the products that you have launched. You can't just rest or just be fixing bugs. When they come up, you're like, oh, there's a bug, let's fix it. You need to also plan on how to make it better, how to make it easier for customers to use your product, how to solve problems easily for your customers on that product. 
right? So you need to plan and prioritize future releases accordingly. And then again, planning um, for updates also has to do with your business goals, the goals for your business, right? If the business goal shifts at some point, maybe not totally shift, but if it evolves, you need to know how to plan to update your product to reflect that goal. So sometimes a business goal is probably customer acquisition. At that point, you can focus on your onboarding. The plan for the product is to make have seamless onboarding, ensure customers can, can come um, onto your product without any hassle, right? Because of your focus on acquisition as a, as a company. Now, if your company's goal shifts to um, probably retention or shifts to um, revenue increase, increase of revenue, your product has to adapt too. So you have to also plan for updates according to the goals of the business per time on your product. So at some point as a product manager, you're focusing on, oh, we have to make this better. At other points, they are just you just pick another thing on the same product that you are improving on because the, the product is basically updated based on your business goals and on market trends, right? So it's very important that you stay up to um, date with your business goals with the market trends and use that to update your products. Whenever the market trend changes, try to understand how that affects your product and make sure you evolve with it so you're not obsolete, like I mentioned earlier. All right, now um, keep promoting and marketing the products. I'm sure a number of us, I don't know, um, should know about go-to-market strategy. Basically, um, working with the marketing team to push your product to the market, that's before you launch, is a strategy that you create. Probably you create a document on how you're going to market your products before the product launches. That happens before the launch. Now, after you have launched, you need to still promote the product. You need to still market the product. Don't stop promoting the product because of you've launched. Keep your marketing efforts going to maintain the momentum and attract new customers. It is very important. Don't say because of you have launched now, you just relax and then you don't communicate to your marketing team again. I gave an example before where probably customers are dropping off or your cat aban abandonment rate is high. You go back to your marketing team and then they come up with, with you, you can come up with strategies to promote your products even more. Sometimes you launch and you've done all the whole marketing stunts before you launched and now you've launched and probably at the beginning you had a lot of people come on your product and use it. And then at some point, the momentum just starts dying and um, your active customers keep reducing. You need to go back. You need to go back and see what you can do to promote your product. You can't just leave it like that. You can't, it is your job as a product manager to make sure that your active users, are they keep increasing or at least try to maintain them for some time. They should not decline. And you do that in collaboration with the marketing team. If you don't have a marketing team, then however it is you had um, promoted your product before you launched, go back to that document, go back and re-strategize and make sure you come up with plans and strategies of how to promote your product. Um, now, one of the ways that you can promote your product is positive customer feedback. If you have customers using products, using the product and they have positive positive feedback, add it on your website. You have to, you just add it as testimonials. Let people see that oh, somebody is using this um, product and this is what it is doing for the person. Add your testimonials. Add it on your website. Add it. Put it on your social media handles. Just basically be in people's faces with your product, and just let them know that this product still exists. Right, the product is still out there. It exists. So that is um, one of the important things that you do as a product manager after you have launched your product. Now, another thing that you need to do is you need to focus on customer retention. Um, customer retention is crucial for the long-term success of your product. You need to work on strategies to keep your customers happy and engaged. They need to, when they open your app or when they open your product, when they use your product, they need to be happy. They need to be fulfilled using that product, right? So you come up with strategies to keep your customers. Sometimes you see their customers are dropping off. You come up with different strategies. I put examples here. For example, easy onboarding, that's to attract new customers. 
you have easy onboarding. Then for customers that you already have, you can have customer loyalty programs. Um, tell the tell customers, for example, if you do get your KYC done, you get five points. A good example of this is um, Piggy Vest. I don't know how many of us here use Piggy Vest, but on Piggy Vest, when you transfer money out of your Flex wallets, for example, and you transfer it to maybe um, your normal bank, you just maybe you transfer from your Flex wallet to Access Bank or to your GTB account or something, they will tell you, oh, you would have gotten 30 points if you had transferred it to your Pocket app. That's a point system. And I know a number of people that now what they do is they transfer from Piggy Vest to the Pocket app. Then from Pocket app, they now decide to use it or to transfer to their bank account because they want those points. The points convert to money. You can do that on your on your product also. You tell them, oh, if you complete onboarding, you get five points. If you complete a transaction, you get two points. On my products, for example, we tell customers, if you buy a time for us, you get 2% cashback. That is encouraging them to use the product. So we are, we are trying to retain them. If you buy it from your normal, if you buy a time from your bank, normally, you're not getting anything back. But if you buy from us, you get 2% cashback. That's we encourage the customers to buy a time from us, for example. So there are customer loyalty programs like that. There's, there's also the um, parts where you can tell customers, your existing customers to refer. I think referral programs are very, very um, common these days where you refer somebody and once the person does a transaction, you get a particular amount of money or you get some points, that kind of thing. It keeps the customers on your product. Customers keep referring others to come on the product because they know that they are rewarded for it. So those kind of um, those kind of things encourage customers to stay on the product. Then also you need to have adequate and efficient customer support. To retain customers, it is very important. It is so important to have good customer support. I've noticed that even with me as a customer, if a product is good and everything is fine, I'm happy I'm using it. But the one day that the product doesn't work and I reach out to customer support and I don't get good feedback or I don't get help, the help I need, I'm discouraged. And it happens with a lot of customers also. You see complaints like, oh, this, um, I couldn't even transfer and the customer um, care was just useless. So you need to have like good customer support. Now, a way to have good customer support is something that I do on my products now. Once we push out a new feature, I train the customer care and the operations team on how this feature is to, is to be used. You train them on how to use the feature. You probably have how-to documents. I always have how-to document um, documents for customer care and for the operations team. Basically, any customer facing team, we have a how-to document. So when customers reach out to them, they can easily troubleshoot what's going on. Even if they can't remember, they can always go back to documents and check, okay, this is what the product manager said should be done if this happens, or this is how this is to be used. So if the customer is confused, they can provide useful information to the customer. It's important that your um, customer care provides useful information. And they can only provide useful information if you, as a product manager, train them on how the product is to be used. And you also provide documents as backup for them to use. Then they can provide useful information. And it will also give you, as a product manager, peace of mind because they don't always have to run back to you for every little issue. They come back to you that, oh, this customer pressed this thing and it did not work. They already know what to do. They know how to go back to the documents and check. You have peace of mind. Only when they're like large or really serious um, issues, do they now escalate to you? So it's important that you train your product, um, your, sorry, your customer support team. You train them, provide documents that they can fall back on whenever there are issues. So focus on customer, that's a way to focus on customer retention. If your customer support is good, why won't I want to? remain on the products. Why won't the customer want to remain? Because they know even if they run into problems, it will be sorted out easily for them. So that's another point. Now, um, the next one is utilize data for insights. Utilize data for insights. Use data analysis to make informed decisions. Understand user behavior and preferences to guide product improvements. If there's a product, if there's a product that has launched, then there definitely should be data that you're collecting from that product. Whether it's a store, a financial app, 
whatever it might be, there will be data. You should have the number of signups that you have. You should have the details of those that have signed up, have details of those that have downloaded the app, things like that. That have You have all that information. Utilize the information. It's not just there. It's very important for product managers to utilize the data that they have, that they've gathered from their customers. Um, using Amplitude, sometimes you can see if not even only Amplitude, there are other tools. You see that a customer has signed up with a mobile phone or they've signed up on the web app. Using data was how we knew, for example, in my organization that our customers prepare, prefer our mobile app. Now we have a um, mobile responsive web app. But even though we have that, they still prefer the mobile app. So if there's an issue with the mobile app, we are very fast to fix it because that's where a lot of customers are going to be getting onto our products from, not from the web app. Though the web app also is important to us, but we know that the mobile app is more important. When it comes to prioritization, for example, maybe we're working on push notifications or something, want to work on push notification for the web app and for the mobile app, we work on the one for the mobile app first because a bulk of our customers access our products from their mobile app. Data is what helps us with that information. Data also helps with the information of how many customers are doing a transaction per time, how many customers are finishing their journey, like the journey on the products from start to finish, how many customers are doing that, how many customers are dropping off. You have all that information from data and it helps you to improve the product. So um, sometime last year, we needed to improve our customer onboarding because of looking at our data, we realized a lot of people will sign up, but they won't get their KYC done. Now, when we looked further into it, um, UX research, we, we realized that the KYC was just kind of difficult for them. There was always an error. There was always an issue. So we changed our KYC provider. That is what data does for you. It is so important. It is very important. Um, most organizations have data analysts, but even if there's no data analyst in your organization, just learn how to look at the data and just look at the numbers, probably take a course or something on how to understand data. So as a product manager, it is very important. I can, it is so important. Data is so important. So learn how to read data, how to make sense out of data, how to create stories from your data to defend yourself. Sometimes you want to do something an improvement on on the product or you want to probably take out something from the product because you feel it's not useful and the stakeholders probably management we ask you why if you don't know how to utilize data you will know how to defend yourself you will know how to defend the actions that you take on your product but if you know how to utilize data then you can defend the actions like okay we added this because of we realized that um 15 percent or 20 percent of our customers do this 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 and it's easy to defend and nobody will actually blame you when you can present data to them so very important that you utilize data for insights after you have launched your product now um the next thing is be agile and adapt be ready to adapt to changes in the market and um to changes in customer needs stay agile and be open to making adjustments. I mentioned this earlier when I talked about the roadmap. I said the roadmap is not cast in stone. It's the same thing we're talking about here. Be ready to adapt. The market trends can change. Different things can change. Just be ready to adapt. Be agile. Don't You can't just stick to your guns and say, oh, this is how it was last year, and that's how we'll continue it this year. It doesn't work that way. Just be ready to make adjustments. Be open to making adjustments. Be open to suggestions. Be open to improvements on your products. Now, the last point is celebrate success. This is very important. Most times as product managers, some um, people say product managers and um, product management is a thankless job, right? Because when there are issues, they remember you. When everything is going fine, they're like, oh, that's that's fine. That's why we employ the product manager anyway. So you have to be the one to celebrate success. When a product, you've launched a product and the product is, is successful, celebrate the product, celebrate your team, buy pizza for everybody, declare pizza afternoon or something, buy drinks and celebrate. It encourages the team, it encourages you, it encourages the people that have helped to build the product. So always remember to celebrate success, no matter how small the success is. It might not be every time that you buy pizza, I mean, but if you see that, oh, you had more transaction numbers this week than last week, celebrate it. Tell the team, oh, we had more transactions this week. 
everybody will be happy, everybody will be encouraged. So celebrate success because sometimes as product managers, to be honest, nobody will tell you thank you. You have to tell yourself thank you. You have to make yourself happy when there's when you are successful in launching your product. You've launched the product, it's fine, people are using it, you're having positive feedback. Celebrate, celebrate yourself, please celebrate your team. It is very important. And um with this, I think I've come to the end of my presentation. Yeah, thank you very much. All right, thank you so much, Adeola. Thank you so much for this amazing, amazing information packed session, right? Um, I mean, this is mind blowing. I hope that we're going to get the slides right even though there is um even though there is going to be a recording, but I believe that we would be getting the slides to yeah, the I'll session to guide us Thank you so so much. All right, all right. Um I guess one of our team members is going to get across to you to um get the slides. Right. This is this is mind blowing. This is this is wow. Thank you so much. This is awesome. Um we really do appreciate and it is very, very informative and for me, it, it came in, you know, really handy, right? Came at the right time, right? So yes, thank you so much. I mean, people are happy. People are, people are, you know, their expectations are met, and um, I think that's the whole essence of this um, of session, right? Expectations being met, right? Thank you so so much. All right. Um. So guys, do we have questions for Adeola before we? Um, end the session. Also, guys, let's go ahead to our social media uh, on Instagram. Um, on Instagram, it's Innova Lab, Innova Lab NG. On LinkedIn, it's Innova Lab, and on Twitter, it's Innova Lab. Let's go ahead to share the things that we have learned in this session this evening. I mean, Adela said so many, so many things, and I think that you know she has watered us, and it is important that we also water other people by. You know the nuggets that we are taking from this list. That being said, do we have questions for Adiola before we end the session? Do we? If you have questions for Adiola before we end the session, please raise your hand so that we can take your question. Right. So I'm just gonna. Okay, I'm just gonna be taking the question. I mean, okay, Ola Raji, please go ahead with the question. Ola what are they doing? Please go ahead with your question. Ola Rewaju, are they? Oh, was that a mistake? Okay, I, I just take that as a mistake. All right. Um, Ola Rewaju, are they doing? If you are still looking to talk, you can just raise your hands again. All right. Um, guys, do we have questions? This session, I wouldn't lie, is really an insightful one very straight to the point practical with the use of experience and adiola's experience as well you know after um, a product's launch okay alan roger says he has issues with his mic his question is how do you navigate a failed product launch adiola okay hi alan Raju. so when you say a failed product launch that means you've launched and probably the product is not being used or something right um, is that the issue or you launched it and there are issues so I need to know the context is it like it is out there but it's not being used or you're not getting the numbers it's not a successful product is that the question Lara you please let us know in the chat box as quick as possible it's not a successful product Okay. And by, by saying it's not a successful product, does that mean that you know maybe you should just expatiate or something? Alari Waju. Or Adela, would you like to take it from here? Yeah, let me just um take I think I understand what he's saying. Like it's not successful. Okay. That means it was launched, it's not being used. Um probably nobody's using it. You're not getting the kind of users that you expected you would get the kind of engagement you thought you would get so the first thing to do as a product manager is it can be very discouraging actually but first i would say you should just calm down and just breathe 
right? It can be very, very discouraging. Then you need to go back and check what happened. It means something had probably gone wrong during your planning phase. Now, during your planning phase where you do your research, so maybe you didn't do your research properly or there was an issue because if you do, if you do your research properly, both for a new product and for a new feature, it means you know that this is actually something that is needed. This product that you are trying to build or you, that you just launched is something that is needed. Now, if it is, how do PMs move on? Okay, sorry, sorry. So now if it is something, let me finish with this um, question. Now, if it's something that you're sure that from your research, it was, it is a product that you, you're sure is actually needed, then you should intensify your marketing efforts. You can't just call it a failed product if you've not gone ahead to market it more and then concentrate on, you should have target users, right? So concentrate on your target users. Don't just market to everybody, every way. You have a target, so concentrate on them and market it. If you've done your research and you're sure this is something that was needed. I think an issue, one of the issues that we have in organizations these days, probably in Nigeria, I don't know if, it's, if, it, ha if it happens outside the country or even sometimes outside the countries, people just come up with this great idea and they just start building a product. There's no proper research done. If you don't do proper research and build a product, it might be a failure. If you're lucky, you might have you might have good adoption. People might begin to use it. But if you don't do proper research, then you might not have users because nobody really said they needed this thing. You might have thought about it that, oh, this thing is needed, and then you do it. But then remember, as a product manager, you are not your user. The users are different. So do, a, do proper research, launch the product. If the product is actually needed, but it's not being used, then intensify your marketing efforts. And then probably try to throw in um, things to encourage people to use it. So, for example, there are products where they say once you sign up, um, you get this amount of money. That's if you have that amount cut out for marketing, that's fine. But if you don't, just intensify your marketing efforts. Um, I hope that has answered your question. Um, I don't know who asked the question. Okay, Uluwashio. I hope that has answered your question. believe it has or okay yes that it does it does answer um this question right okay olari raj's question is how do pm move on to be a growth pm okay so to be a growth pm right um hmm. it means you are you growth for 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 a product to grow for it from the from the first start is you you know how to collect data i think growth pms i i've kind of done that just briefly very briefly um you should have like very good data skills so you know how to collect data and um you know how to report the data and how to convert it into um how to convert it into useful information for your product right so it means you're focusing on improving the business. A growth PM's major focus is to improve the business, improve the product, right? So it means you're improving revenue for the um, revenue generation by the product for the business. You have to know how to improve the revenue. You have to know how to basically translate data to import to useful information on the product that helps the product to grow. I believe strongly that for a product to grow, you need to, that's why I said data is so important. For a product to grow, you need to know how to utilize data. You need to know how to focus on the right things. So it means you, you are very focused on the metrics and making sure that those metrics are achieved, right? You meet your metrics, acquisition, activation, retention, things like that, revenue. There are things that you focus on. And so to become a good um, growth PM, to be honest, just take your data very seriously. That's what I will say. Um, I hope that has answered you, Olari. What you are they doing? Well, I believe that has answered this question as well. All right, guys, do we have other questions? Do we have other questions? Um, if we have other questions, please let's use the chat box or just raise our hands before we get the session ended. Thank you so much, Adiola. I mean, the comments here, 
is amazing. Everyone is saying thank you. Thank, thank you. you. So I'm so ready to launch you. You know, this came out the right time for me. I really enjoyed the session. Thank you so much. This was an insightful one. Thank you so much, Adela. Yes, trust me, guys. This is one of those sessions that, you know, I don't I don't think we would even drop the recording quickly because I'm ordering it. <laughs> right. Thank you so much, Adela, for this amazing session once again. And the team says I should say, you know, thank you, thank you for this amazing, amazing session. Thank right um me. yep um we don't i don't think there are other questions and there's no and up where it's and or and <laughs> so yes guys like i said earlier go to our social your social media either linkedin twitter or, or instagram all right go ahead to you know share the things that you have learned tag or tag in overlap tag adiola as well adiola richards is yeah it's adiola richards on linkedin as well so yes, just tag, 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 tag. And um, yes, expect the repost, of course. All right, guys, thank you so much for this amazing, thank you so much for this amazing session. Thank you for your time as well, Adiola. Thank you, everyone. Um, yeah, I think that ends this.